sorry to be missing this conference. But I'm really glad that so many of you have come together to talk about farm workers and to talk about how this country needs to show some respect to the people who harvest our food. This country was founded in many ways on unfree labor. In the South, it was slavery. In the North, it was various systems of indenture. And we've moved past that, hopefully. The origins of having migrant workers is that uh, a farmer might only need farm workers for a very brief period of the year, you know, during that period in which they harvest them. So these workers would be migrant, and they'd go, you know, region to region as the harvest occurred. Um, but as there, you know, has been this continual push for cheaper labor, there's a different meaning from, for the, of migrancy, which is drawing workers from as far away as possible in the poorest countries possible to get the cheapest labor imaginable. So, you know, one of the difficulties has been when you're talking about farm labor, and farm labor being, you know, routinely the lowest paid workers in our society. The, the problem for generations has been who's doing the work. And again and again, you'll find that the people who are doing this most difficult and important work are people who we despise anyway. At the heart of so much of this exploitation is racism. I mean, that is the bedrock of the system. And we're here in California, and if you look at who has been harvesting the fruits and vegetables in the state for more than a century, um, it's been immigrant labor. And, um, you know, a lot of what the farm labor system is right now is a way of pitting the poor in this country against the even poorer. So when you think about changing the system of migrant labor in this country, there's a lot that needs to be changed, and that's why it's so difficult. It's not just, you know, creating compassion for the poor, but it's also creating a kind of tolerance for people who are different, whose skin color is different, whose language is different. And, uh, you know, if you see what's been going on in Arizona and in Georgia, we have a long way to go in terms of getting rid of that racism. Um, I came from, you know, a privileged background. And I've spent time with some of the poorest, most exploited people in this country, farm workers, meatpacking workers, uh, spent a lot of time in prisons. Um, and what it taught me is there but for the grace of God go I. But it's like an old-fashioned thing to say grace before a meal. It's like this notion that you're thankful for your food, uh, that you shouldn't take it for granted. Certainly for most of us who don't grow our own food, who don't raise our own animals, who don't have a clue how to do it, the notion that someone else is doing it for you, the notion that someone else is doing this incredibly hard work of picking your fruits and vegetables, you know, yeah, you should be grateful. Well, you know, it's just really easy to blame these greedy growers or these big, mean corporations. But I would argue, if you eat, it's your responsibility. It's just that simple. I mean, you are connected to these abuses when you buy this food. And you can deal with it and confront it, or you can deny it. And that means, you know, getting involved and helping different groups that are trying to help migrant workers. It means getting to know your farmer and buying locally. And like I said earlier, you know, buy from the farmers you like. And if that farmer at the farmer's market seems like a real <laughs> they're probably, you know, not treating, treating their workers that well. But also, in a bigger way, you know, pressure needs to be put on the big purchasers of fruits and vegetables because farmers, you know, are easy to blame, but these farmers are being squeezed, you know, they're being squeezed from above. There are a handful of big supermarket chains. There are a handful of big processors. Those are the companies that can afford to pay an extra penny a pound for their, you know, tomatoes. The big, um, you know, wine producers can afford to pay 
you know, an extra dime for the grapes, an extra 20 cents for the grapes to go into one of those bottles of wine. This is a problem that can be solved, you know, without bankrupting this country. But people have to be aware, and they have to care, and they have to realize, you know, how they're connected to this um, every time they take a bite. So if people basically demand a change in these working conditions and in these wages, it will happen. It really will.